welcome back or welcome if you are new to my booktube channel Goddess of Gore. My name is Vix and I like to talk about horror, thriller, sometimes fantasy and occasionally sci-fi books every week. Not every week, that would be absurd. As I said on my August TBR video, for the first 14 days of the month I was going to be taking part in the Summer Mixed Tapathon. So, without further ado, let's get on with it. Hosted by Leanne from Literary Diversions, Victoria from What Victoria Read, Jean from Jean's Bookish Thoughts and Charlotte from books and bargains. This readathon, which we now know will become a seasonal readathon with the autumn edition soon approaching. There were plenty of reading sprints and Instagram hashtags floating around. And you know what the best thing about this readathon was? It was UK time. So there were plenty of sprints that I could take part in live and not all at 1am. It was so refreshing. The bingo board and the book choices then. First of all, I was in the middle of a pretty bad reading slump, so I didn't want to overwhelm myself by picking too many books, so I doubled up on the prompts. For Nature on the Cover and Unseasonable Read, I read The Children of Red Peak by Craig DeLuey. And it turned out to be not so unseasonable read after all because most of this book was set around the blistering hot summer on a mountain. This tells the story of a group of now adults getting the news that one of their friends has just died. These adults were the child survivors and the only survivors of a cult. A cult that started out pretty much peacefully and idyllic. A kind of off the grid church group but it's, they soon got paranoid, secluded and delusional. Obviously, the children of the group went along with whatever the grown-ups were doing and although a couple of the older children did start to question what was actually happening, they were all pretty much of a swept up in the whole thing. So we find out that they've all tried their best to put the cult behind them, stay out of the spotlight since the fascination of the public of these kind of cults get and their friend ultimately couldn't cope anymore and she killed herself. The cult moved to a remote location on the slopes of a mountain from the farmland they had made because God appeared and told them to. And as such, the provisions they brought with them didn't last very long. So hunger, thirst and paranoid delusions were their source material and they were given one task only and that was to build stairs to the top of the Red Peak Mountain. But then they were asked to make some kinds of offering to show how true to their faith they were and that's when things started to get gory. Eyes gouged out, tongues cut off, hands chopped off, you know, that kind of thing. The leader of the group suffered for them all too so he didn't get left out. I won't spoil it though and this book did end ambiguously. It was my first Craig de Louis and I thought this book was fabulous. The writing style was so easy to get into and I had it finished off pretty quickly. Next back to the board and it was a, a book with food on the cover set in another country and I chose the Wee Free Men by Terry Pratchett, the first of the Tiffany Aching series. This book starts with Miss Tick, a fully fledged witch, getting a feeling of magic over on an area called the Chalk, because over on the Chalk lives Tiffany and her family, and Tiffany has just seen a Jenny Green Tea in the river and smashed it over the head with a frying pan while being watched by a group of little kilt wearing sheep stealing tattooed blue men and only witches can see fairy tale water creatures and feagles so Miss Tick must go to Tiffany and have a look at her for herself. When they meet she offers to take Tiffany to a school for witches and to get her all trained up and become a fully fledged witch herself but in the meantime she should keep her head down and wait for her to come back. But 
While Tiffany is keeping her head down and making cheese and butter and things and whatnot, her little brother Wentworth goes missing. While the adults are out trying to form search parties, Tiffany forms one of her own with the Knack McFeagles because her brother has been taken by the Queen of Fairyland. And Tiffany doesn't like people taking her things without asking, so she's going to have to go and get him back. In the amazing, witty, adult and young adult star that epitomises Pratchett's work, this is a fun introduction to the younger years of Tiffany and the Nat McFeagles. They will go to have many more adventures following her through her witch training. And I loved this reread of this book. It was as good as the first time I ever read this. So, the read a book in the sunny spot goes without saying because when this readathon was going on, the UK was going through a bit of a heat wave, so every spot was a sunny spot. Next, we'll have a little break, and here's some footage of me doing what I do to unwind. So, here's some day off self care. Hello. As promised, this is what I do for my hobby. I make soap, or one of my hobbies anyway. I've got a bloody million of them. I make soap, so I just thought I'd film this in super fast speed so that you haven't got to uh, get bored too much. So yeah, we'll get on with making some soap. making my soap I was also completing the free choice or a book based on your favourite summer song. 
Q. Did you guess? Yes. My favourite summer tune, I was listening to the audiobook to Jaws by Peter Benchley. I was listening to this on YouTube and since then I have found out that it is available for free on Audible for members, which would have been the better option. I love this book for the first part and then it got very, very weird, like bad weird, off the rails in every kind of bad vintage book way. I think the parts that the film seemed to stay faithful to were the best bits. I didn't even mind that Ellen Brody once went out with David Hooper's brother. I did mind the off-kilter relationship that David and Ellen had. That was just weird. If you took all of the sexism and weird fantasy parts out, I think this would have been an amazing book. I'm going to sound a little bit of a hypocrite and say everyone should read this book. If you love Jaws the movie, read Jaws the book. To tick off another prompt, I watched Jaws the movie from 1975 for my movie night square on the board. So, to wrap it up, this readathon was littered with reading sprints on the host channels with opening and closing days on Victoria's channel. Along the way, we talked about Lemon Fanta, toaster bags used as bookmarks. Just say though, I think this is the truest We're representation of Jean that we've ever had on a sprint before and it took Jill to bring out the real Jean energy. <laughs> you went into a register there that nobody who wasn't Scottish could understand. <laughs> and everyone's favourite carbs. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely had to um, I like them. more pasta with butter and cheese. Also team pasta. Yeah. Oh, that oh. sounds great though, super crispy oh, potatoes. Yeah. Oh, potatoes and pasta you can both do so much with. Yeah. Yes. Potatoes are mine, but specifically fries. Yes. I mean, but I do see this is hard because any type of bread, like mm. garlic bread, I'd miss garlic bread a lot, like a lot. If oh, I but didn't are you talking about one. one carb and probably pasta? Yeah. Yeah, just one. Yeah. One carb. Can't have any others. I just think one you. carb to save them all. <laughs> you can make pasta one, one carb to rule them in the dark. Like like orange batter chips. Yeah. We'll not have the other peasant chips. What are <laughs> orange? Orange batter chips. I'm a Google that, so I'm going onto the Google machine. I do not understand. Mm -hmm. Orange I batter love that. chips. Thank you. What is that? I'm invested. Literally, a West Midland speciality orange chips are an authentic type of chip dipped in an orange coloured batter before they're fried. They are believed to have been a delicacy in war years and they were made to break the monotony of wartime fare. I feel like I've got to know a little more about my fellow readers. So, I shall leave you with the final prompt, which is the summer holiday photos from my youth, the summer throwback. Until next time, bye bye.